Thursday night. Welcome aboard Murder Hobo Inc. Cacophony Edition. Thanks for joining us. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. If you've been here before, thanks for coming back. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D with us, join our Discord. If you want to buy cool shit like this shirt or this phone case or a duvet cover or shit like that, check out our store at the bottom uh don't forget if you want to be on a one shot like this saturday or on between the rules our talk show on tuesdays m hobo inc twitter or gmail hit us up we will get you on there for about two hours of fun uh we'd also like to thank our sponsors if you're looking for some custom dice like uh the bw here uh on twitter check out at pirate dog dice they can make a plethora of dice or maybe just say no, don't want to. Uh, but hit them up if you're in the market for custom dice. And of course, if your game stinks, unlike ours, ours smells like success and fun, try yourself some Adventure Sense from oddfishgames.com. It will enhance your calm, John Spartan. Uh, along with Adventure Sense, they also make something called the Shine System. So if you want to write scenarios like myself, only gooder, uh, check out the Shine system uh, coming soon, their RPG version. Uh, so look for that. Currently on their slate is how to RPG with your cat, Kickstarter. I think it has uh, three days left. No, I uh, had eight uh, minus two, six days left on it. Uh, it is fully funded, 300 plus percent. Uh, two suits of cat armor are still available, as well as the dice jail, etc. So check them out at oddfishgames.com. That being said, folks, this is the Cacophony Edition. Let's go ahead and introduce you to the cast, and then we'll go ahead and do a quick recap. David, you are up first. Who are you, and who are you playing? Well, hi, I'm David. I am also on the Calamity campaigns, both A-side and B-side. I play Crow. I also play Ingbe. Uh, tonight, I will be playing Zadar. You could also usually find me on Between the Rolls, but I've been missing lately. So, <laughs> so anyway. Hiatus. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Force tight. No. Enjoy <laughs> it. Enjoy the break. Enjoy it while you can. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, most Tuesdays you can catch me there, uh, or sometimes on a one shot, uh, like this coming Saturday. So, I'm, don't, I don't think I can make it, but if you can, please join us. So, them. Anyway, so you know what I mean. <laughs> us, them, him, R2. <laughs> uh, very good. Uh, next up is our producer, normally behind the camera tonight, both in front and behind. Carrie, my wife, who are you? Who do you play? Uh, I'm Carrie, and sometimes I make dice. Not not often enough, my husband tells me. And I'm playing... <laughs> <laughs> need more dice. Yeah, yeah, you need more. Uh, I'm playing Camille, a wizard necromancer, and uh, she's had a romantically hard way to go in this campaign. Well, sorry, soap opera. And her coffee and her cheese. Yeah. You, maybe you find some of that tonight. Maybe. Who maybe. knows? Hard, hard to say. Uh, folks, here it is. Uh, these guys spent most of their early adventuring career in the city of Cacophony, hence the name. Uh, they have branched out, uh, to say the least. Uh, currently, they are at the Grand Academy. They failed in destroying an artifact of rare and intense evil. Uh, when they evil. threw it into the volcano, the caldera... Uh, turn to stone uh, like a good 80s song will. Uh, the only problem is it did not destroy said artifact. They are traveling currently with Maurice Lucinda, a castaway on Ilsa de, Cor uh, Ilsa de Curson, uh, the island with the volcano. Uh, they also have in their, uh, I guess, retinue, uh, two Minotaurs, one named Barney, the other named Clex. Uh, those two and Maurice and a newfound love interest from the Academy are going to return to Ilsa uh, to, for some reason, build a nice house and, I don't know, raise uh, fruit. Uh, 
they also found a lot of diamonds in the volcano. So I think yeah. that's what Clex and Barney are going for. Uh, but uh, they have befriended a sea captain uh, named Captain Montrose del Rio, and he will be transporting them down to Andura, the desert home of the gnomes. If you followed the Sedelis campaign earlier, uh, you know one very famous gnome from that group. Uh, these guys are going to drop off Maurice. And he's probably not even watching. Prob uh, he might be watching because he's curious. He's a curious sort. Uh, these guys are going to drop off Maurice. Uh, and I believe you're going to drop off the box so Maurice can keep a close eye on it. Is that what I understand? Yes. Uh, that's what we're discussing. <laughs> the other question they have is their good friend and quasi-mentor, Mortimer J. Sneed, uh, a, cur ass. a current professor at the Grand Academy, known for his time-traveling escapades, is currently undergoing time dementia. And his young charge, Zephyr Zubak, has insisted that the party take his stolen time travel necklace and figure out a way to destroy it before he destroys himself. Mor uh, Mortimer is somewhat mad mentally at this point in time. And that is the other decision these guys have to choose. Do they take their friend, who may or may not be clinically insane, or do they leave him behind either at the Grand Academy or on the Ilsa de Corazon? That's it. You're all caught up. Uh, Zidar, you have the uh, bag of holding with the artifact and the time travel necklace, if I'm not mistaken. That is uh, correct. It is up to you two. Is Mortimer going or is Mortimer staying? You know Zephyr's not going. Right, right. Well... Camille and Zadar talk about this, <laughs> you know, probably to ad nauseum. <laughs> so it's, still, you know, um, so I don't know, Camille. Uh, these are my concerns, and I will voice them right here. Okay, as of right now, one of the thing, possibilities that I can see is to do what Zephyr said and destroy the amulet we have to go back to the island and use the volcano for that that's the only way i can see it the thing that i'm worried about is if we take mortimer either me or him or both of us will end up in that volcano when i try to destroy it or some other catastrophe will happen so that is those are my concerns so the volcano is yep. the only way we can destroy the amulet. We can't just use a sword. Well, I don't know. Can right. we use an axe on it? <laughs> yeah, go going ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we I can mean, talk to the Minotaur. Like, you know, that seems like it would be overkill for an amulet, but where did he get it from? Well, that's the thing. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I. I was just thinking because we're going there anyway uh, to, I don't know. I mean, I think we should do what Point Dexter said and just leave the the box on the island in Maurice's care. I agree with he that. He volunteered to do it, so we should let him do it. You know, um, I trust him enough to where this, where if we leave him as the charge for this box, he'll He'll honor it. So, um, so that said, <laughs> um, we can try your way and destroy the amulet manually. I Does, mean, does Zephyr know where he got it from? No, nobody no. knows where he got it from. Nobody knows. Is he? Can we talk to him? If we talk to him and we start asking questions about the amulet. He's going to he's going to assume that we have it. Well, we just have yeah. to be sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to go well. That is not going to go well. So, 
I, I think we shouldn't question it, just destroy it. So, I mean, we've got a Minotaur, so we could try to destroy it, you know, by hand, you know. That's we've fine. got two Minotaur, and I'm sure one of them has an axe. So, I both do. Yep. Uh, I don't know, though. Because what if we set off some sort of weird time ripple? <laughs> I don't know, Marty. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back and make great sure my Scott. parents. Yeah, great Scott. I'm gonna have to make sure my parents kissed at the under the sea dance. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's always a conundrum. So, now not to steer you in any direction, mm -hmm. uh, but you have spoken to Poindexter, uh, Doc Amell. He suggested going to the library and in Andorra, and that is why the trip was planned. That's uh, right. He does not know how to destroy it. You can go talk to him. You can go talk to Mortimer. You can uh, the, the volcano. Amulet or the, the amulet? Or are we referring to the amulet or the box? <laughs> oh, you know the box can't be yeah, destroyed. You, yeah. yeah. You have no idea now. Maybe the library at Andorra will tell you that as well. Hard to say. Yeah. I, I mean, you're kind of stuck at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, and I I will not give you any clues as to how. No, to I know. That, I... That'll take the fun out of it. You guys yeah. just go ahead and figure it out. And uh, we will yeah. roll from there. I have the options. Okay. Uh, so. Mortimer here, you look after. Um, Camille, says, Camille says that she thinks maybe Mortimer should stay here while you guys go on your journey. Okay. If that's the case, then yes. And I think that was your vote as well, correct? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now the question is do you want to talk to him first or not? Camille says she wants to chat. Yeah, we'll chat. We'll chat. Okay. I just don't want to end up like Mr. Frodo. <laughs> so. Oh, don't worry. Rudy Mortimer biting off a finger. <laughs> now, Rudy will save you if you do. Uh, yeah. You just have to go to South Bend, Indiana, which is close to where I grew up and not exactly the greatest place on earth. So, <laughs> uh, unless you're devout Catholic and stupid. Uh, so, Camille, you want to go talk to Mortimer? Are you taking the amulet with you? Are you taking Zadar with you? Uh, I'll take Zadar, but I don't want to have the amulet with us. Well, Zadar, what are you going to do? Because you have the amulet in the bag of holding. Well, I mean, as long as he doesn't know, it's fine. That's fine. Yeah. I don't think he'd be able to sense the amulet in an extra dimensional space. Oh, <laughs> so. Precious you smells hope. to me. Hell, you haven't checked on it. It might be gone already. Zadar checks the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Give me an investigation check. Oh, okay. All right. Ooh, okay. Investigation, you say. That will be a nine. There's a lot of stuff in here. It's like Bullwinkle's hat. We right. only put put a couple things in here. What other stuff did she have in here? Well, she's got a purple hair, a rabbit. Oh. Uh, and it, because you rolled poorly, give me a D12. Oh. <laughs> this thing's going to bite me, isn't it? 12. 12. Reroll. Three. Six. Uh, the blue or the purple hair escapes. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! It is running. Okay, Zadar goes after it. <laughs> Neil, what do you want to do? Do we need to have that rabbit back? Well, it belonged to the kind head, headmistress oh, of that's right. the island. Yeah. Um. Sam. Yeah. Can yeah, I, so can I shoot web at it and catch it. That is that the would be a good answer. idea. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and d20 it. 17. Uh, you snare the hair. Nice. Oh, 
Thank God. <laughs> oh, it pays to have a wizard. <laughs> well, only when they're higher level. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a good call, though. Yeah, uh, that was a really good call. So, so yeah. our, uh, as long as you don't roll a one or a two, go ahead and withdraw the purple hair. Okay. Uh, am I rolling a d12 or a... D20. D20. Okay. What, what were the numbers again? A one or a... Two. Two. Oh, okay. Five. This thing's kicking. <laughs> it's uh, it's sticky. And it's like a child has held the hair recently. It's very sticky. Uh, but you managed to stuff it back into the bag. Thank okay. goodness. You determine that the necklace is probably in there somewhere. Do mm -hmm. you want to risk opening the bag again? No, let's not. No. No. Okay, <laughs> no. fair enough. Uh, as you go, um, Richie is standing guard outside of Mortimer's room. Uh, and Fonzie and Fonzie around. <laughs> uh, and he will tell you that, uh, Camille, you roll a d12 against me. Nine. Eleven. Uh, that Mortimer is in an okay mood today. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So you guys will be allowed entry if you so choose uh, and go down a short hallway to his bedroom where he looks like he's Doc Holliday in the sanitarium. Oh, wow. Uh, he's just laying there bemoaning, talking. Are his feet sticking out? His feet are sticking out. He has no socks on and he's talking in a foreign language. Oh, my. Oh, I go up to him and I take my quarterstaff and I kind of poke him. I'm like, hey, Mortimer, what's going on? Persuasion check. He always liked my quarterstaff. Yeah. 18. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just reliving a past moment in history. I'm a time traveler, you know. Yeah. Do you remember me? Yeah, you are. <laughs> I remember both of you for I am Mortimer J. Sneed. I met you while I was on sabbatical in the city of Cacophony. How are you doing? That is true. <laughs> I have misplaced my amulet and need to hire you to find it. Okay. What does it I, look like? You've seen it. You've held it. I you guys have, have Oh yeah, that's You guys thing. had to hold it to triangulate your position. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. He believes thieves have taken it and he blames the Minotaur. Well, I think foul beasts, you know. Well, no, don't jump to conclusions until we've made a I, full investigation. He I, he looks down and he, he says, if you look under the blanket, you'll know I cannot jump at all. Uh, I don't need to do that. I don't know what I might see. But Is he shackled? <laughs> Mortimer, do you really think that you should have that amulet? I mean, you seem like you're ill from all of your time my travel. work is not done here i still have plenty of things i need to do what things i need that amulet i need to solve the riddle of amour love amour a-m-o-o-r oh, okay. amour <laughs> oh that he was, amour. <laughs> yes he was a legendary chieftain in the desert region of Osme. and what's hmm. the secret I don't know. And I've only been there a couple of times. It? it was written on the wall of the Great Pyramid. Hmm. So what will happen if you don't solve it? The world will end. Undead will pour forth from the portal. Bad things will happen. Or they might bring cookies. It's kind of a toss-up, really. We can hope for cookies, you know. Um... Uh, this uh, this desert and Great Pyramid and all that, does that happen to be near the Gnomish Library or anything like that within the same region? It is on the other side of the Giant Kin, which is south of the Great Library. Okay. Hey, good to know. All right. Hey, Mortimer, what was the amulet made out of? I do not know. I do not know metallurgy. Where did you get it from? Oh, that is a trade secret, my dear. Well, I'm just trying to understand who might want to take it. 
because would anyone know what it was if they were just looking at it? Well, it does have a gold finish on it. Wow. Okay, well, I guess we'll take this job. Excellent, excellent. I expect frequent updates. Of course, we'll send a, an owl every chance we get. What a shake on it. <laughs> I reach down, grab his hand, and kind of shake it within the shackle. <laughs> I lean over and give him a kiss on the forehead. Ah, very nice. I'm feeling generous today. Yeah. And I tell him, Mortimer, never fear. We will get to the bottom of this mystery. Mortimer, don't get any ideas. <laughs> he starts throwing on the Mortimer charm. He no. does. <laughs> I've seen the Mortimer charm in action. No, thank you. You're Everybody like a brother in the to me. Looks like, uh, uh, ooh, that's kind of gross. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you've talked to Mortimer. You may have gained insight. You may not have. Well, I okay. guess we better be on our way. Yeah, it looks like uh, we've got quite the adventure. Captain okay. Montross Del Rio is uh, waiting by the dock. Uh, you guys hurry up. <laughs> Where else have you got to go? I have to go to Andorra. I have to deliver another package. That's the only reason I'm taking you guys there. for double Sibbit. <laughs> I'm not at liberty to say. So I, I in itinerary is to the island and then off to andorra is that correct i suppose i'm losing two crewmates for you guys you guys may be expected to go ahead and help with the rigging <laughs> i'm kind of short so so Darryl, give really it a shot. i'll use some magic hand it'll be fine <laughs> uh so if you guys are ready you notice that the ship is loaded with supplies, uh, strange supplies, a lot of rope, a lot of pittons, a lot of nails, a lot of construction equipment. Ah. Uh, in two days, it appears as though Maurice has uh, wheeled, dealed, and finagled. Spent a uh, lot of that money. He, he's traded the diamonds in for some stuff. Uh, uh -huh. And you notice that the ship is not quite as buoyant as it has been in the past sits a lot lower in the water. Uh, your tiefling associate is still grinding it out. Oh, with her come on, man. Tiefling lover. They've been going at it the entire time. They need lube or something. That's yeah. got to be bad. They're tieflings. Yeah. They like fire, so uh, friction is good. Yeah, they like friction. Okay. So. <laughs> Whatever. So, uh, Captain Montross uh, bodes you guys well. Uh, I thought somebody was going to see you out, but I don't see it in my notes. Uh, so you guys unceremoniously depart the island of the Grand Academy and head over to uh, Ilsa de Corcion. And it will take two days because you get favorable winds. Awesome. And it's just light clouds, so it is beautiful weather. Uh, you still have Barney and Plex, uh, so they will go ahead and hoist sails, do the standard stuff. Every once in a while, you see your old friend come up out of the cabin for fresh air, uh, let the stank out, and get some food uh, <laughs> before returning to uh, the tiefling's chambers. Wow. Uh, wow. On the second day, uh, you guys are headed right for where you found the cow. Uh, if you inquire, Captain Montross has pointed out that Barney and Clex feel this is a much better spot for a landing, even though there's the straight up. So uh, they will ask, I think it was Zadar that used spider climb, uh -huh. if you would generously uh, cast spider climb on them uh, so that they may elevate themselves quickly uh fashioned uh, a series of rope ladders that they have been constructing uh, and then that way maurice and his newfound love can go ahead and climb up as well uh of course of it looks course. like their storm and d-day uh, yeah <laughs> or storm in normandy um, exactly the white cliffs of the desert. <laughs> so uh two days the end of two days uh 
you'll have to use the longboat. Uh, the captain won't come in because of the reef. Uh, it will take several hours. Three to be exact to go ahead and unload all the cargo and put it on the sandy beach. Clearly the cow is up top again, doing whatever, maybe eating the foodoo berries. Uh, Maurice Lucinda uh, approaches you in confidence, just the two of you, again repeats, if you want me to watch the box, I will guard it with my life. And Camille and I have agreed. And uh, we, we think you should be the charge of the box. I, I'm, I have the confidence you'll keep it safe. I will keep it uh, as if my life depended on it. Well, it really does. It, it really will. <laughs> <laughs> Do not open the box <laughs> at all. When a Paltrow's head is in the box. There you go. Uh, he will take it. He will thank you guys. Uh, in the handshake, he will slip you some diamonds. Oh, well, that was Small, nice of Smaller diamonds, you know, kind of, you know, yeah. high roller kind of diamonds. So, you know, he goes, for your travels, uh, please be careful and please uh, visit whenever you can. Uh, sure. if, I, if I discover any way to destroy the box, I will let you know. Yeah, well, maybe we'll bring you back some souvenirs. Nice. Uh, Statue of Liberty, maybe an Eiffel Tower. T-shirt. Yeah. I went to Antara and all I got was this fucking T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but all, all the lettering's really small because right. they're gnomes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as the sun begins to set, uh, Captain Montross uh, casts off. Above on the peak, you see four figures: two Minotaur and two humans waving goodbye. No uh, cow. <laughs> what about, I say, what about the love of their life? <laughs> The cow is off in the distance. Going, I'm not coming out there. This is not the Sunday Margu campaign. Ah, I'm not going to violate the cow. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, but you guys will sail off. Uh, Captain Montross says uh, it's going to take a little over a month to get to Andorra. Uh, assuming that the winds are good. Uh, the next morning arises. Uh, he will ask you guys to perform basic duties, no heavy lifting or anything like that. Every day you're there, you'll be able to rest 100%. Not a big deal. Uh, day one, partly cloudy. Beautiful day. Uh, you guys head off and there ain't no land in sight. Uh, both of you give me constitution rolls. Uh, 18. You guys are accomplished sailors, so <laughs> this will not bother you the rest of the trip. Uh, day two. White clouds. Very nice. Beautiful sailing weather. Uh, you notice your skin is getting tan. You're getting that ruddy appearance. <laughs> they, they did manage to pack a lot of vegetables so you don't get rickets. <laughs> Well, uh, it's on anyway. the scurvy. <laughs> uh, uh, light rain on day three. <clears throat> uh, perceptions of dark. Um, perception is. Uh... I'm sorry, D12, my bad. Oh, a D12. Damn it, because, man, that was high. <laughs> Six. Seven. Um, you know, not much is going on. You hear tales of pirate vessels in this area. Uh, one of them crewed by the undead. Oh. So, uh, you know, you won't roll insight, but, uh, you know, these sailors are prone to tall, tall tales, da-da-da-da-da. Not a big deal, right. in the rain especially. Uh, the next day, uh, you get a boost with high winds. Yes. Uh, going the correct direction. Lucky you. Uh, as you do, as you do on day four, you notice a merchant ship going the other way. 
Captain Del Rio has no intention of signaling this ship unless you ask. <clears throat> Do we need to there's... ask? I don't. Day can't five. See any... <laughs> I, I can't see any reason to stop it. <laughs> nope. Clear. Clear day. Beautiful day. Gorgeous day. Salt air filling your lungs. Uh, not bad at all. Day six. More high winds scooting you along. Uh, I'm sorry. Hang on. Two in a row. High winds scooting you along at accelerated speed. Nice. Day seven. I really don't want to tan. Uh, you aren't going to tan on day seven because it is overcast. <laughs> uh, who rolled the D12 last time? Uh, Sadar. Camille, D12. Six. Three. Uh, another ship. This one is bearing a whole lot closer to you. Uh, it has blue sails, and it is the mark of the Toman, the elves. Me, 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 me. The high elves? Uh, the high elves. Uh, the arrogant cocksuckers. Ah, uh, fuck them. Uh, and there is a signal from the crow's nest uh, that the other ship wishes to parlay. Ugh. Captain Mars, if we have to. Well, it's up to the captain. He says, yes, he does not mind dealing with the elves. Sometimes they have some good things. Okay, uh, it's on you, dude. You guys are going to meet the La Bohem. Freddie Mercury. Yeah, Freddie, Freddie, Frederick Mercurichrome is the captain. Mercurichrome. Uh, <laughs> The elves uh, toss over ropes, and the two ships come together. Uh, the high elves come in. These fuckers look dashing. I mean, dashing. Of course these they guys, do. these guys are the Scarlet Pimpernels or something. They are just very flashy. Uh, do you want to over, or do you want to listen in on the conversation? Duh. Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, the high elves are puzzled at the presence of you two and the uh, screaming sounds of pleasure coming from the <laughs> deck. Still? <laughs> <laughs> They're just going to screw their lives away. Wow. Uh, and you can tell that Captain Montross and uh, Captain Mercurichrome are, are just passing knowledge uh, amongst each other. Uh, you find that the high elves have just visited Sedelis not too long ago. Uh, and consider it a uh, country bumpkin mm. country uh, nation. Uh, it's just a mix of cultures, blah, 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 blah. They too have heard of the uh, ship pirated or uh, crewed by the dead. Uh, they haven't seen it. They think it's full of crap. Uh, there is a trade going on <coughs> for supplies. Uh, who wants to D12 against me this time? I will. Okay. If you win, your ship gets the better of the deal. Four. One. Uh, your ship gets the better of the deal with fresh fruit and a couple of sheep. So there's going to be protein on the menu, boys and girls. Uh, I march up and tap my little quarterstaff. Do y'all have any cheese? D12 against me. Eight. Uh, no. Ha ha, nine. Uh, we have some cheese, but it's going to cost you. What do you have to offer in trade? I have some <clears> diamonds. <throat> how much for how much? Uh, does anybody else want cheese? Uh, Captain Montrose will say, you know, he's sure. Is it our? <laughs> yeah, I'll get cheese for, <clears throat> I don't know, the three of us. How big a diamond are you going to give him? I don't know how big a diamond One I of the have. high roller diamonds? Yeah. One of the... One of the high roller diamonds? Sure. D12 against me? Three. Three. <clears throat> Reroll. Five. One, again. Uh, deal. He takes it uh, and 
commands one of the cabin boys uh, to go get the specialty package. Uh, they continue to talk. Goods are exchanged. Again, Captain Montross, being the shrewd uh, sea captain that he is, came out ahead, <clears throat> managed to get some ale and some herbs and nice. some spices. Uh, you then see the porter rolling a one and a half foot circle of cheese. <laughs> wow. Headed your way. Uh, the porter then asks uh, Captain McCurichrome how much uh you get and he points out the whole thing because the diamond you get gave him was not bad uh <clears throat> and he plans on giving it to the true love of his life Aww, as an engagement present that's so sweet uh so yes you get a wheel of cheese that's the size of you <laughs> she's amazing. hugging it <laughs> looks, like, looks like grilled cheese is on the menu uh, yeah <laughs> they separate after three hours uh each of you go your separate ways the high winds were beating you both so you managed to remain still after cutting loose from each other off you go day eight clear as a bell uh the crew thanks you for the cheese assuming if you're sharing uh, i will share uh they have mutton <laughs> and uh they they ask for a, a little bit of cheese so that they can smother the mutton in uh brie or cheddar there's whatever no you got. mint jelly for the mutton uh sorry do you see any brits around here no, I'm, not eating, <laughs> I'm not eating the mutton i'm just all about the cheese okay so um, no. sadar will try it the mutton so con check okay camille uh, plans on being stuffed up <laughs> no i just feel Let's bad see. for the sheep uh 14. Hey, it's not bad yeah they cooked it well uh day nine Storms rolling. Uh -oh. On to you. Hopefully the storm and Camille's belly from all the cheese is, <laughs> is it really? Uh yeah, it, it is not a good storm. Uh oh. the waves are very high crashing on deck. Captain Montrose will tell Camille especially, uh you Stay need inside. to you need to lash to the mass. Is it a perfect storm? Get downstairs. Not yet. There's no Wahlbergs in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I lash myself underneath. Uh, Zadar, are you staying in your cabin or are you going on deck? Uh, I will lash myself with uh, Camille. Is Daphne <laughs> still down there doing the nasty? Oh, yeah. Oh, my She's God. using the motion. Really? <laughs> Although Montross will call uh, the steward up to see he can use any magic on there he looks very gaunt very drained um but so zadar you are down below with camille or lashing yourself to the mast uh is camille lashing herself to the mast no, or I, going down below. The cabin? I went underneath okay i'll stay in the cabin with camille okay the storm is bad uh out your portal uh you can tell the wind is really whipping. You can hear uh, nothing from the sails, so you presume uh, that they have been rolled up. But this ship is all over the place. I will take con checks from both of you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Three. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh... 12. <laughs> uh, Zadar, you're doing okay, but Camille is harping her guts out. So give me another con check to make sure. See if that, I don't hurt harp that, for that's Camille's right. harping. <laughs> oh, symp oh, sympathy harp. Oh, man. Let's see. That's two plus two. <laughs> yep, you're both harping your lungs out, uh, which is okay because this storm is bad. Do we have uh, a bucket at least? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure you have a bucket. Or you could just barf in the bag of holding. 
No. <laughs> it just goes to an extra dimensional space. Uh, go ahead and roll uh, perception check. I will roll for Camille. 11. Uh, perception. Uh, okay. Uh, 12. There'd be wood cracking above you. Uh, this storm is harsh. Uh, over the din of the storm, you can hear Captain Montross or Captain Del Rio uh, screaming uh, in his guttural uh, Minotaur language. Unless you guys speak Minotaur, you cannot tell. Mm -mm. Uh, but you can gather that this is a bad storm if you can hear this man below deck. Uh, a lot of cracking, a lot of tossing. At this point in time, with your four and your three, neither one of you give two shits. Uh, it is so bad at one point that the seawater blasts into your open portal or your portal that would have been closed, but is now covering your deck in vomit. <laughs> and uh seawater sea water. <laughs> oh. uh, it is very bad the next day uh dark clouds are there as you wake up stomach empty uh, a ghastly smell all over your room the portal is broken uh when you guys go up because you are no longer roiling in the waves uh you notice that there's a problem yeah. uh, the mast has taken a significant hit and you notice that you're missing uh -oh. one crewman uh is it the important one <laughs> <laughs> the captain no it is not the okay captain. thank god uh but there is a general malaise over the crew as uh they miss their friend and associate Kramer. I uh I clean up a bit. I press the digitate and press the digitate the cabin. Thank you. <laughs> Pass mending on the porthole and lock it. And then uh yeah proceed to head up on deck. Uh yeah they're they're missing one crewman the mast is broken however land is in sight you are moving along a rocky coastline do we know uh, what land it is do you want to ask yes this is called sedellus it's the place where the elves just came from captain Dario. yeah the elves weren't too fond of it but yeah. which means it's probably a great place well <laughs> so. we might be able to find ways to repair the ship at least yeah well, as you're going in, it's overcast. You can see the shoreline. Uh, Zadar, give me a d6 roll. Uh, four. Uh, everybody give me an investigation check. Twenty uh investigation 20. uh you both spot a structure along the coastline on a shallow cove uh it looks kind of like a house is it burnt <laughs> it is not burnt okay uh it actually looks quite new uh we'll point that feature out to the captain from the shoreline. Uh, <clears throat> Both of you give me investigation checks. About how far out are we? Uh, you guys are hugging the coastline, so maybe a quarter of a mile. Uh, uh, what are eight. we rolling again? Investigation? Investigation. Uh, 18. What was yours, Camille? Eight. Uh, Camille does not notice that our notices there are rocks. That's <laughs> unfortunate. As does Captain Del Rio. Uh, he will ask for volunteers uh, to take the longboat and go ashore to see if these people have the necessary equipment. Uh, is there a dock and, there? There is no dock. Oh. Um, it, it's on like a secluded cove. Okay. Yeah. Probably going to be a golf course in the future. Probably. 
<laughs> um, well, uh, Zadar will volunteer if Camille does. So, sure. Investigate. There will be two Minotaur with you. Um, uh, finally, there is peace on the ship because Daphne and her lover are just exhausted by this time. Thank God. Can we leave uh, them here? Uh, well, they'll, they might look for little blue pills. Uh, you guys head in. Uh, who wants to d20 the roll to get in safely? I will. 20. Nice. Uh, you four successfully navigate in between the reef. It is actually a perfect defense for this area. And as you are moving towards the shore, you see three figures approaching. One is a man in armor, uh, a tall, stately fellow, uh, but he is a little bit portly. Uh, the armor is ill-fitting, but it gives an air of regalness about it. Uh, colorful plumage extends from the helmet. The other is a woman who looks fairly sturdy, and the other is a teenage boy. Uh, as you get closer, the man demands to know your identity and why you are trespassing. Okay. I, when we were pulling up, I'll, I'll say hail before we get there. Arms up, you know, non-aggressive, but yeah, I'll answer his questions uh, <clears throat> sequentially. I say who we are. Uh, I tell him that our ship was damaged during the storm and we're seeking a port to perhaps make uh, repairs upon the ship. Port? We know uh, nothing of this island. Well, uh, the nearest port is several days away, my friend. I myself am General Torval, and this is my manner. General Ed, it's a pleasure to meet you, and... Um, uh, it, resources uh, around. Are there trees that could probably pr be procured for lumber or anything like that? Uh, my men are currently building the barracks. Uh, we could probably spare some. Uh, that would be excellent. Um, he, he keeps eyeball on the two minotaur. I and I I assure you that I know we're kind of a hodgepodge of. Uh, different persona here. Uh, the the ship and the ship's captain are crewed by Minotaur, but uh, they, they are chartered by us and uh, they are providing transport for us. Give me a persuasion check. Uh, persuasion. Ooh, that's one of my things. Uh, yeah, 24. <laughs> you may come ashore the bovines stay behind. Uh, uh, perhaps will uh, the gnome? Could she perhaps come? She she come can with? come ashore. Okay. Uh, we tell the minotaur kind of in confidence to the side. Look, kind of seems a little wary. Uh, not only of you but of us. But he's kind of trusting us to go around. So if they could hang back by the launch. You know, we'll see what we can do. They mentioned something about maybe procuring lumber for the ship. We'll wait with the boat. I appreciate it. I thank them. Salute. Mm. They, roll, they roll their eyes at you. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, some you. chick saluting them. You, know. uh, you move forward, uh, General Torgel. Uh, mm -hmm. will introduce his wife and his young son. Uh, and then you will notice uh, while the facade facing the ocean is complete, uh, the front of this illustrious manor is not yet completed and there are a substantial amount of workers there. Also in a small copse of trees to one side uh, is the construction of a barracks. Uh, General Torgel will introduce you to his foreman uh, called Jidim Melkak, uh, and he will ask what you need. Okay. Uh, I tell him the nature of the damage to our ship, 
to see if he could surmise. I'm taking this person is in construction of what he thinks we would need. His name's I, Tom I'm, Silva. I, That's what he goes by. Oh, okay, Tom Silva. Jim Melcat or Tom Silva. Yeah, I explained to him the mast is cracked. So I think you're muted. Oh, me? No. Oh. Does he need know any boat ugh, boat builders? Uh, he does not. He is not a seaman by trade. Mm. He said seaman. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I tell him our mast is cracked. I kind of give him an overview of the damage that we've had from the ship. Look out below! And you hear a cracking of a large tree coming from the cops of the little cops of trees over there. Everybody make a dexterity check as the tree is felled. <laughs> Lord Torgal and his wife make it okay. Uh, 16. As does their son. As okay. does Camille. 15. As does Zanar. Uh, What's their son named? Uh, Henson. Okay. Henson Torgal. Uh, Jidim, uh shakes his head and begins to lambast the workers. This is not the tree that I wanted down. This, this will not work. Uh, do you want this tree? Yeah. Uh, sure. uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, I think this tree uh, would, would probably serve our purposes. Uh, he calls his men forward and there's uh, there's about eight sturdy men, but this is a big tree. Uh, he points out that he's going to have to go ahead and get a gutter dug to move it out because um, it's just going to be too damn heavy. So it's okay. going to be a couple days. Okay. Unless you guys have some unknown strength that he's unaware of. <laughs> Between the two of us, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, unfortunately, I mean, we could provide some extra hands, but that would... Uh, that would take permission from uh, General Tortle, and I don't think he's wary of the nature. I think he's pretty wary of the makeup of our crew. Jidim does not understand at all. He doesn't like the Minotaurs. Yeah, we're, we're traveling Minotaurs. with the Minotaurs. Mm -hmm. I mean, how we many, have the muscle. Uh, we have a full crew. Well, minus, minus one. Minus two. Or, two. Yeah. yeah. Where are they? on the boat uh we have two down by the launch and of course the rest are on the ship uh jidim will take general tortle off to one side they will have an argument is what it appears to be uh and tortle will move off to the front of the building uh and jidim will say if you want your two associates to come up uh lord torgal will allow it uh with their strength and the assistance of my men we might be able to get this dragged down to the coast and you guys can tow it behind your skiff uh <clears throat> yes i mean definitely agree to the terms um <clears throat> i'll approach general torgel mm -hmm. uh, he, he is around to the front of the building okay i'm gonna seek him out sure. so and you can find him surrounded by archers. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I hail him and ask if I can can speak with him. Certainly. Uh, he continues to bark orders at his men who are building the house who are now armed with crossbows. Okay. <clears throat> I, uh, it, if he allows me to approach, I talk to him and I say, General, I wanted to thank you uh, for letting us uh, seek our repairs here and hopefully this token will be a jester and payment for some of them i hand him two of the high roller diamonds oh uh he takes them and thanks you this is the only reason i agreed to this was to get you out of my hair faster yes can i take and... one back <laughs> uh he and his men will then head towards the felled tree as uh, Camille comes back with the two Minotaur. They will form a line and the Minotaur will not like that at all. Uh, Wondery and Camille, they will ask you 
if their safety is in jeopardy? Uh, yeah, I'll explain to them that uh, they're wary of us. So, and I'll say they're racist bastards. So, but aside we from them, that, <laughs> so let's just get our shit and get out. Yeah, the anti bovine league, the yeah, ABL. That's right. Um, <clears throat> they watch. The crossbowmen do not raise their weapons, although you can tell by their fidgeting that they are uncomfortable with these two behemoths. Uh, Jidham doesn't seem to give two shits about it, uh, and he explains to them in the common tongue, this is how we're going to do this. We'll get some rope. You guys can tow it out behind. Fix your boat and leave. Uh, um, Zadar says... I can possibly use some magic to, to aid us to move this thing along uh, and starts doing the ritual for Tensor's floating disc. Mm, no, it's, See, yeah, that's it's not going to work. No, the log is going to be way too heavy for that. Okay. All right. Uh, it, so it's going to be over 2,000 pounds, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. This thing's, think of the beam at Notre Dame. Okay. Oh, fuck. So. Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> so this is a big thing. Uh, so uh, they start to put their backs into it. They start to haul. It will take them ooh, four fucking hours uh, to get it down to the coast. Uh, Sweat will be beating off the eight men and the two Minotaur. Uh, Jidham will help, uh, but there's not enough room to adequately maneuver uh, without hurting himself. Okay. Uh, Lord Torgal is quickly growing impatient. Uh, Lady Torgal, his wife, uh, will make cupcakes. No. Oh. No. Oh. So, and with these cupcakes, she will serve something that she calls sweet tea. Uh, it is a alcoholic brew. Oh. Uh, and the Minotaur will take great delight in it. While she is very benevolent to them, they will always keep an eye on General Torgal. Um, once the bovine go back to the log, she will explain to you two that her husband has a problem with Minotaur as he has had to deal with them in the Southlands uh, by Fulton, uh, the main city in Sabellas where he was served as chancellor for a while. I or I'm sorry, Seneschal. As the, the, the city itself, is it uh, a port city or is this inland? It's a very large port city. They are building a wall around it to protect themselves against pirates. But the walls are incomplete at this time. Okay. Uh, they would probably not appreciate your associates but if you two were to visit it would probably be fine okay all right i thank her for the tasty cupcakes yes yep. we definitely thank her for the refreshments after four hours uh they managed to drag that thing halfway into the sea uh with tide rising uh they've attached several ropes to it so that you guys can head back towards the ship and drag it along behind you. Uh, General Torgal never lets his guard down at all, uh, even when the Minotaur have their hands full and are clearly helping. Uh, Lady Torgal thanks each of you, including the two Minotaur, much to the chagrin of her husband, and hands you a small basket. Uh, and it has some cupcakes in it. Aww. Oh, that is sweet of her. Thank you. Yeah. And Camille, uh, their son, presents you with a flower. Oh, well, that's very sweet of him. Yes, it looks like a purple iris. And how old is he? He is 12. Okay, well, I give him a kiss on the forehead. Nice. I say, you're very sweet. Thank you. He, he excuses himself to the loop. Oh, come on. <laughs> He's 12. <laughs> He's 12. Yeah. He, he takes it and will now refer to you as his girlfriend because exactly. you are the same height. Fine. Fine. Uh, hey, Camille, finally a romance. This is just a little illegal, but. Right. 
Uh, Jidum will speak briefly to the Minotaur in their own language. Oh. Uh, and he's Tom Silva, bitch. What, whatever he's saying, no, it's not going to happen. Uh, so the Minotaur declare they are ready to leave. General Torgal anxiously just taps his scabbard, waiting for them to leave. I say, okay. bitch, I'll cast Grim Harvest on you. <laughs> uh, most of the, the crossbowmen have gone back to fixing the front okay. or, or doing the general construction on the front. Uh, it's going to be a very nice place till some cocksuckers burn it down in about <laughs> I wonder who years. that's going to be. Right? <laughs> um, oh, man. But okay. uh, the large wooden beam does indeed float, and as it's moving, uh, Jidum will be knocking off the branches because there's not a lot of room for him to help push. So uh, it will be a nice clean, for the most part, a beam. It'll float. The tide is rising. You guys can uh, row back, and you will arrive. Uh, Captain Del Rio will want a report from one of you. We give him the report. We tell him this is what we could procure for repairs to our, to our mess. Oh, I, oh it's perfectly fine. It's actually larger than our needs. Uh, and the Minotaur sailors will be jumping overboard to attach more rope to it and a pulley system, uh, and they will make the repairs. It will take one day. That's not bad. I reward them all with cheese. They are very happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll 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 uh, counsel with uh, the captain and tell him that there is a port city of Sedalis nearby. But oh, to be Portland. honest, I tell him about the General Tordal <laughs> and the city's pretty much their attitude towards out, outlanders and minotaurs. Uh, most of my kin are pirates. I'm sure that the people of Fulton understand that and would probably not like uh, to be there. If you guys are interested in visiting, uh, we did make good time for two days. We could spare a few hours. Otherwise, we will cut across the Western Basin uh, and make our way to Andorra. It will take... I think it's going to take like four weeks to Andorra. You said okay. it was going to be a month initially. Yeah. Then you broke shit. We hit a storm. <laughs> you know what? I did say that. Let's go with three weeks. Thank you. <laughs> Damn. Like it fucking matters. You guys did jack. You guys did jack shit for ten days. You saw a merchant ship. You met the elves, and you broke your ship. That's not my fault. Uh, yeah, I'll ask the captain if there's anything that he needs, and if Camille wants, we could uh, try Sedalis. We could take a launch into Sedalis, I guess, or something. Okay, so for me, I don't need to go to the racist whatever place but if there's supplies that we need if the captain needs anything yeah that's go. yeah that's what i tell the captain yeah. who wants to d12 against me yeah david you can oh, okay <laughs> yeah if i win uh he'll need supplies okay five seven i do not need supplies okay and i guess we have no reason to go so <laughs> uh he sets sail. Uh, he's now moving at an angle that you can tell. High winds again uh, push you quickly yes. across. Uh, off in the distance, give me a perception check. Both of us? Yep. Uh, 16. Me too. The promontory, the stone edge of the island you see a sprawling city being built a lot of smoke from fires and things of that nature uh this thing's gonna be huge uh you can also tell with your sharp keen eyesight uh that they're building a wall around it 
So it's going to be quite the sight to behold in the future. Uh, you guys head out back into the open waters uh, and you will experience light clouds, overcast, and thunderstorm. These are might unpredictable this time of year. Uh, uh, the next day is clear, Yay. clear sailing. Uh, and each of those were three days. Uh, so you are now 12 days into the journey. Uh, which is going to take three weeks. Uh, give me an investigation check as you guys are swabbing the deck because you're short sailors. Yes. Uh, investigation, you said? Mm -hmm. 24. Mm -hmm. 17 plus 7. 16. There's something moving in the waves. Mm. Like underneath? Oh. Uh, just below the surface, uh, a cry comes from the uh, uh, crow's nest. They see it as well. Uh, most of the crew run over to the side and are looking. Uh, just as everybody gets there, a pod of dolphins goes blowing past you guys. Can I look behind where the Are dolphins gonna... were coming from? Oh, yeah, sure. There's something in the water. What kind of something? You can't really tell yet. <clears throat> Is it under? Right below the surface. You can tell the, the, the wake that it's leaving. No, that it's that's large. not good. That is not good. Uh, probably chasing the dolphins. Uh, you can tell the Minotaur sailors are... What is that thing? They clearly they they haven't seen it before. Dudes, we need to like do something. Captain Del Rio yells, "Get the harpoon!" Yee! Everybody, roll initiative. Oh. Okay, fifteen. Well, crap. That is twelve. Both beat me. Uh, it looks like a snake of some kind. Uh, very elongated, kind of wide, maybe five feet, six feet wide. And it has shifted its attention from the pod of dolphins to your vessel uh, and is headed right for you. Uh, yeah. I'm All of the Minotaur engaged. have run to go get harpoons. Okay. Are we bothering? Are we keeping you up? You're keeping me up. Yeah. I'm an old <laughs> man. I need my sleep. <laughs> so, yeah, Zadar is like uh, prepped. He's like, she is checking the, you know, both scimitars and, you know, feels well, confident with the arcane energy passing through her. So, sure. sure. Uh, the thing is coming full tilt. So with that, <laughs> I wish I was a bard. I could give us inspiration because <laughs> we would probably need it. So are they going to attack us first? It looks like it's headed right for the ship. Okay. So can we do something first? You can do something, uh, keeping in mind that uh, you don't know if this thing's aggressive or not. I mean, right. it could just be hungry for dolphins, and if you attack it, it could piss it off. Uh, yeah. Or this could be a pretty fucking dangerous thing that you need to deal with. Okay. I cast Thunder Wave at it. Oh, shit. Nice. <laughs> you know Camille's reactionary. Uh, 16 on the save. I don't know what that means. Uh, there's think... a constitution save. Versus yeah. your DC. 
I'm pretty sure 16 gets it. Uh, it still takes damage, but it's not pushed back. That's why I need to roll. Uh, Thunder Wave does. Uh, 2d8. Uh, half that damage, and I'm not pushed. Uh, so 2d8. Okay. Hmm. Does that up, up cast? Do you know what level you're casting it? And 10. I don't know. What level do you want to cast it at? Well, I'm at 8. Uh, well, no. What's the highest spell you've got? 4? Uh, yeah. Uh, you could up cast it and add 3 more dice to it if you wanted. But that will take away one of your 4th level spells. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So Give me three more dice. Eight, right? Eight plus three D eight. Twelve. Total? Well, the second. Oh, part. okay. So twenty. Yeah. So I take half. Well, you gonna do anything, Zadar? Or now that she's pissed it off? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Zadar rolls her eyes. Is like, oh, we're doing this. And hey, I uh, didn't cast ball club. <laughs> <laughs> Thank true. you. Uh, Zadar whirls her hands around like that and launches chromatic orb. Okay. As lightning towards it. Eighteen. If I get a save. Uh, it is uh, to hit. Uh, as a whopping 12, hit it. <laughs> nope. Okay, so that lightning just goes shooting right past it and ball of lightning. Nice. Uh, the creature launches itself out of the water, and you can tell I don't know, it looks like a some kind of dinosaur looking thing. It's a sea monster, it's a sea serpent. Uh, and it's going to hit the ship. With a 16 plus 7, it connects and launches itself onto the deck. This thing's about 40 feet long. I was going to say, uh, it can land on the deck? How big is our ship? Uh, it's probably 30 feet up. But yeah, it has launched itself. It is now on the deck. And its fanged head is moving around. It is going to do some crush damage to the ship. Uh, to the tune of nine hit points of damage. Uh, everything is in disarray at this point in time. The ship lurches to one side on the dex checks from you guys as well as the crew. Captain Montross will be the loot bearer. Uh, 15 for Zadar. All the Minotaur hit the deck. Nine. Oh, As actually, does Camille. Uh, new round. You will have to pick yourself up or attack from a sitting position with spells, Camille. Mm. If you are sitting and it chooses you, it will get advantage against you. Well, first we start with Zadar because he had the 15. Okay. Uh, Zadar will try another spell. He will launch. Uh, uh, first, I'm going to make sure are the Minotaur engaged at this point or? No, they're on their ass. Okay. Bastards. Okay, with that in mind, Zadar's. You're the only one ice... standing. Okay, ice knife towards the, the creature. Sure. Um, let's see. Uh, 17. Does that 17 hit? does hit. Okay. That connects. Uh, let's see. So it is Ice Knife. Uh, uh, does 1d10 piercing followed by the explosion? Sure. Of five feet, of only five feet. <laughs> Into the deck. Oh, shit. <laughs> 
uh, let's say for residual damage. So stop blowing holes in me, ship. Exactly. <laughs> All right, a D10. All right. Yep. Okay. Uh, nine points of piercing frost damage, followed by two D6 of cold. Is the cold the residual damage? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 11 points of frost damage. To the deck as well. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> the ship is snapping apart. Uh, Camille, your choice. Uh, stand and melee attack or sit on your ass and spell attack. I cast web at it. Sure. Gets plus five, so it tears apart the web strands. Uh, it looks like it's covered in a doily now. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> one is Captain Del Rio, two is Zadar, three is Camille, four is a crewman. Captain Del Rio is targeted. Ooh, 12. Misses Captain Del yeah, Rio. Yeah, the dolphins could should come back to help us. We saved them. Right. Uh, right. They're smart. Yeah. Top of the order, Zadar. Uh, Zadar is going to take steady aim and fire crossbow uh, at the beast. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, Twenty, not natural, on the hit. <laughs> and that is eight points of piercing damage, but does, does Zadar get sneak attack since it was going after Del Rio? Uh, no, because it knows you were there. Okay. It's just lashing about on the deck that is also fractured courtesy of you. Uh, Camille, you're up. Uh, true strike. Fair enough. Remind me what that does. I can't remember. I, I can't read my thing. Uh... Maybe if I could type better. I'm sorry, I can't read tonight. Uh, extend your hand and point your finger at the target. Your magic grants you brief insight on the defenses. On your next turn, you gain advantage on your first attack roll. Wow. Uh, the creature will target Zadar, two. Okay. Uh, 10 plus seven, 17? Uh, 17 does hit, and I'm going to use the sneaky rogue shit as a reaction, uncanny dodge. Uh, 11 and two is 13 plus four is 17 so half is eight as okay. you get bit uh, uh also strength save okay or you will be caught all right uh save yep one so yeah two <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm going to give you an extra six hit points of damage as you cannot do your sneaky rogue shit when you're trapped like that. Uh, javelins appear uh, in the form of harpoons as the crewmen just start hauling them. Uh, Zadar, you are in its mouth. So a one or a two will be yours. A seven, a six, a 15, and a nine. One of those will, one of those will hit because it's plus three. My AC is 17. <clears throat> oh, no, you, no, you didn't get hit. And oh, three, okay. three hits. 
on the other volley. Oh, okay. Uh, so let's get out the murder hobo dice. There's four of them. No murder hobos. Uh, 14 hit points to the beast, though. Captain Del Rio's yelling, stop breaking me ship. <laughs> and he launches an attack with his axe. Uh, 13 plus 4, that'll work. And the Minotaurs are bad asses. Whoa! Nice. Uh, he lands true. New round! Zadar! Gotta break the strength. Uh, Zadar casts Misty Step. Nicely done. Yeah. So, 30 feet to an unoccupied space. That I can see. <laughs> well, you're looking up. <laughs> so roll a straight up D20. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, 17. You are 30 feet at the back of the ship. Oh. <laughs> Could have been worse. You could have ended up in the drink. Yeah, which that would have been worse. One to five was going to be in the drink. Uh, <laughs> Camille, you have advantage on any attack that you want right now. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything Either. good. Magic missile. Oh. But that's an automatic hit. Yes, let's do that. Uh, you you going to upcast it? Sure. What level? Four. Ooh, okay. Uh, roll me 12d4. 12? Mm hmm. And if you want, uh, you can do 6d8. So how many D12 is she rolling? Eight? She She's throwing 12 bolts 12. at it. Wow. Okay. So 12 D4? 12 D4. Okay. So here's the first three. Next. Next three is three, four, and two. Got it. Next. Is four, two, and three. Next. Four, three, and four. Dang. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. There's 20. Three, six, nine, 12. Two, four. And one. Uh, 32, 36, 37 hit points of magical damage. Yikes. Almighty. Uh, this creature is pissed. Uh, and gonna go after Captain Mantra or Captain Del Rio again. And it's not hurt. Oh yeah, it's hurt. Uh, it got Captain Mantra that time. That's unfortunate. He had a nice ass. <laughs> he's gonna have a nice scarred ass. Let's see if he's can escape the grapple. He easily escapes the grapple, but his body is just mangled by the teeth. Uh, his crew, half will go after uh, the captain. The other half will throw their javelins, a.k.a. harpoons. Uh, three misses and a hit. Ah, but it's a murder hobo hit. 
Okay. Uh, new round, Zadar. All right. Uh, Zadar is going to let loose uh, format magic missile. So. Uh, this Two, three, four. Uh, for a total of 10 points of force damage. What's Camille going to do? <clears throat> he did magic missile as well. I can't do that again. Yeah, you can do it again. Sure. But not at fourth level. Yeah, that's fine. Second or third level. I am just gonna die. Oh, there it is. Ooh, nice roll already. Jesus. <laughs> Wow. Uh, the magic missile strike true. The creature screeches. Everybody give me a wisdom save. Or for gore. Thirteen. Camille is not. Zadar is afraid. Uh, hunkers down, hands over the ears. You look like Matt Damon in Saving Private Ryan at the end. Uh, <laughs> Camille, you notice the creature slips off the deck and goes submerging underwater. Great big trail of blood follows it. Uh, that fucker's going to be running from giant sharks. Good. Uh, Captain Del Rio is quite hurt. Uh-oh. Uh, and asks to be taken to his quarters. His men uh, hoist him up gently, gently, <laughs> boys, uh, and remove him to the quarters. His second in command is pulled off of Daphne and is ordered to take command. Captain Del Rio will be laid up for at least a day as he has fang marks uh, like from poltergeist. Well, can we help heal him? <laughs> you may heal him, but he's still going to be a little bit ginger. Do you heal him? Do we have a potion of healing? I don't think I have anything. Uh, Zadar used his last ones on no. you. <laughs> okay, I guess he's going to have to suffer through And it. Maurice. So. Yeah. so, there you go. Uh, <clears throat> Either that or I can go into Sedalus and get healing. So. Oh, you aren't even close to Sedalus. Now oh, you're we're gone. We're point. far yeah. gone now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you're at far point now. So, uh, after a day, uh, Captain Del Rio shows back up on the deck heavily bandaged uh and it is a light rain uh nice sailing weather uh as he talks to you during the natural course of the day he just kind of uh as his fractured ribs will need mending time uh, i know how that feels <laughs> yeah. in other words he's always going to have problems with his ribs uh, <laughs> yep, same here uh, the next day, the storm gets worse uh, as you cross the western basin. Uh, who wants to D12 against me? Not me. All right. <laughs> Nine. Eleven. Uh, fortunately, there are no further problems. Uh, I'll give you a view of what you're looking at here. That is what you see. You guys are in the N basin, uh, headed towards Andura and the port city, capital city of Nain 
nameless. Uh, I can't remember how he pronounced it. Uh, but you are headed that way. The next day, fucking rain. Just more goddamn rain. Well, rain's not necessarily bad. No, but your ship has damage to it. And you're running on a secondary mast. Uh, and in the rain, the Minotaur cannot make the repairs needed. Day four. Why? Because they're pussies? Because uh, it's too slick. <laughs> I'm kidding. They've got hooves. High oh, winds. That's a good point. Who wants to roll constitution for the ship? I will. Okay. Which I probably shouldn't. Twelve. Uh, there, there's some cracking, but the mast holds its own in the high winds and expedites your trip. Uh, you are now starting to see other shipping vessels headed in the same direction. Uh, you can talk to Captain Del Rio. He will tell you you are about two days out. Uh, but you can tell this place must be fucking hopping because there are a lot, a lot of ships. Uh, you can see flags of various nations, uh, most of which you don't recognize uh, because you went overland uh, when you went to help the Telosians. Uh, wow. So, uh, you know, you don't recognize these. Uh, Captain Del Rio does not seem to be unduly concerned about this. He's been to Andorra before. He knows it is a huge harbor town. Uh, a lot of action going in and out. Uh, the next day, fucking clear. Absolutely clear. And nice. you, can, you can tell that there are uh, a fair amount of ships eight of them to be exact and you guys are all starting to funnel in uh captain del rio will order his uh crew to make sure those sails are catching every bit of wind do you know why uh just first yeah. one there gets a slip everybody else has to wait oh okay got it okay. got it got it okay. so who wants to roll for the Minotaur ship? Not me. I'll roll. Camille, you and I will roll for other vessels. Uh, straight up D20. We'll see if the Minotaur can keep the lead. So Zadar and Camille, D20. So I got... Ooh. 17. 18. Nine. Uh, Zadar, you have a slim lead. Uh, you have plus one to your roll. Okay. So uh, roll again. Roll again, but Camille, you are at minus nine. I am at minus one. Why am I minus nine? Because uh, he had an 18. Oh. So re-roll. 11. Uh, 17 plus 1, 18 again. Uh, the Minotaur ship, because it's overcast, has kept the air in the sails. You guys will beat all of the other vessels there. As you come into view, there is a huge lighthouse here. Uh, it's very old and it's kind of decrepit, uh, but it's noticeable. So as you're pulling in in the evening, there's just this huge bonfire on this tower. Uh, this city is so large that it kind of glows from the bay that it sits in. So it there are several thousand people here, maybe even tens of thousands. Uh, and there are ships departing, coming in, uh, you are full steam ahead, coming in hot. Uh, and uh, D12 against me, Zadar. 
11. Oh, eight. <laughs> uh, you will have to wait until the morning to get a flip. Oh, but we beat the other ones in now, right? You, uh, everybody is filing in behind you. Oh, okay. All right. So, so, so we got you, our position in the queue. <laughs> you have your position in the queue. The operator will answer shortly. So you guys will have one more night on ship in the morning as the sun rises. <laughs> Uh, the dice says disaster. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, do you want to risk docking? Because everybody seems to be at anchor. And it is a pretty nasty storm moving in. You are, your ship is injured, for lack of a better term. Damaged. Uh so if you try and park it, you might cause damage to both the ship and the dock or your ship and another ship. I say we just stay where we're at. Yeah. Uh, D12 against me, Camille. God damn it. 11 again. Uh-oh. Four. Uh, once the storm dies... On the next day, uh, with light clouds, you notice somebody has line jumped you. Ah, oh, fuckers! No, slit his throat. Do we know? Do we notice the flag? Uh, you do notice the flag. Uh, this flag is familiar to you. It's the the elves, goddamn sorry. high elves, isn't it? It is not the high elves. It is the order of uh, what is that called? Is it Plink? Pick. The Order of Pick. These are the assassin monks. Oh, oh the God damn it. Uh, and they have line jumped and taken your slip. You'll have to wait one more hour and then you can approach. Uh, okay. Captain Del Rio is better. Uh, he's had a couple nights of rest. Uh, you order the ship in and we'll demand. <clears throat> Excuse me. Demand to know who those fuckers are and we're going to find them again. Uh, as you are guided into the slip by a smaller boat, uh, it is propelled by four gnomes paddling with their feet. It's a bicycle boat. Wow. <laughs> And they are guiding you in. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> you guys are in slip number 10. Okay. Uh, the monks took slip 19. Good to know. Uh, yeah, the captain is not happy. Yeah, I counseled the captain on them. I say, yeah, we kind of got a history with them. He doesn't give a shit about any history. He's going to get even with them when he finds them in the tavern. Um, so you guys are able to park it successfully. Uh, the captain is well up to the task. The dock is hopping. I mean, there are people, porters. You'd think you were in uh, Cathaway again. I mean, this place is just huge. Uh, I believe I even have a picture of it. It's a work in progress. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's big. Uh, but it only has uh, three docks, but each dock is very long and can contain up to three merchant ships per side. Uh, so this place is full. So the dock you are on uh, is, oh, no, I'm sorry, four uh, per. That eh, doesn't make any sense. Some, something's wrong about the numbers. But anyway, you are on one. You are on this one right here. Okay. The monks are on the far one. Okay. Well, good. Uh, but you guys, uh, they throw ropes over the side. Uh, the dock crew goes ahead and secures your vessel. A plank is pushed into place, and you may now debark. 
Not to barge, to bark. <laughs> nice. To barge. As you, as you uh, do you debark or disembark? Yeah, we do, uh, of course. <laughs> There is a short, squat gnome with a monk-style haircut who's quite gregarious, very friendly, very curious, as Captain Del Rio disembarks first. Uh, this little gnome is just peppering him with questions, asking him if he needs anything removed, da 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 da, -da. The captain asks where those fucking monks are at, and this individual points into the direction and Captain Del Rio goes down to speak with their captain. Awesome. The, the gnome looks at odd even. One odd Zadar and says, whoo, that bull is mad. How are you? How may I help you? Is there anything you need? We're doing fine. Can you tell us something about this fine city? This city is huge. I myself am Zap Rig. I am a porter by trade. I move things from here to there. So if you have any needs of moving things from here to there, please feel free to get a hold of me. This is the gnomish city of Nalithan. How does he pronounce that? <laughs> uh, let me see. Uh, Nathian. Uh, and he's probably sitting at home correcting me anyway. Uh, Nathan, uh, this is the city of knowledge. Uh, I ask him, we've heard of a great library in this land. The uh, greatest library of, of all. Tim, what can you tell me about it? <laughs> what can't I tell you about it? Every piece of knowledge amassed in this world is there. We have items from faraway lands. Uh, what are some of the sights to see in this in this exciting city? There is our fine lighthouse, which you passed already. Uh, yes. There's the library. Uh, and I went ahead and fucking killed the map. Hang on. Damn it. Ooh, I don't know where the map went either. Uh oh. <laughs> That's going to be a freaking problem. Uh, maybe I put it here. Okay, there it is. Hang on just a second. <clears throat> uh, he points out that there are things far and wide to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Things of great knowledge, great gambling, great experiences. Uh, he says there's even a cartographer nearby who has a map of everything. Oh, this is the, the Nate River it cuts the town in half. Uh, you are on the wrong side of it. The library, and he points, and there's the Acropolis, essentially, up on a hill surrounded by uh, stone fortification. Mm, okay. On uh, this side, you'll find a variety of uh, things, places to see. Uh, the Great Temple. I haven't written a... Uh, needs travel guide to Nathan yet. I should probably do that. Lazy bastard. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm only running four fucking campaigns. So. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Maybe by the time you guys come back in two weeks, I'll have something for you. Mm -hmm. uh, but he points out that this area that you're in is called the Dock District. Uh, it's home to a lot of reasonably priced accommodations for the connoisseurs of travelers uh but they have many shrines uh they have a lot of educational facilities here uh there's a phoenix uh university <laughs> uh, is it on the line it's on the line uh but uh it, most most people come for the lighthouse uh which is a marvel of manufacturing couple decades ago uh and the great the great library and there's so much to take in and to see it's just like um 
Because I now I have a cousin who has a device that can travel you around <clears throat> if you uh, want a visual tour of the city. Oh, and what is his what? name? His name is Rick Shaw. <laughs> Rick Shaw. Okay. Uh, he has, yes, he, ha we'll he has look a up your cousin. <laughs> I can have him meet you if you know where you're staying. Uh, yes. Well, well, we'll look for a place to stay. Uh, what is the the which uh which inn would you recommend? Not that one. <laughs> okay. Not that. Uh, he will point out. Uh, yeah, let's see. The comeback in. <laughs> the you in and out. In. Uh, you guys are here. Mm -hmm. He will suggest you go here. Okay. And that is called Millie's Place. Okay. Millie D's nuts. <laughs> wow. Wow. Not Millie really Vanilli. That would have been a better choice. Uh, <laughs> but no, Millie might be related to someone you know. Oh, Lord. <laughs> uh, so he will suggest that you go over to Millie's place. I'm trying to think. Wait, who did we know of D's nuts? That was. Uh... Amanda. Amanda. Yeah. The okay. Adventurers Guild leader. Yeah. Amanda D's mess. All right. Then, uh, yeah, we'll be happy to stay at Millie's place. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, it is a quaint location. It is run by a human. Amanda was a human, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's yeah. a human. Uh, so it is human size. It's not gnome size. Most of the buildings uh, do have accommodations for the. Uh, vertically challenged, as the gnomes will call you. Oh, well, won't call Camille that. She can fit in anywhere. Uh, but there is also uh, a plethora of taverns, gambling halls, things of that nature. A as you go through this area, you notice that most of this region uh, that doesn't do spotlighting. Uh, most of this region, uh, cargo containers. So standard dock procedure. Uh, and before we get too far into town, uh, we'll go ahead and call it a night. So, uh, Zidar, what you think? I think we're in the right place to try to figure out our problems. <laughs> Possibly. This place... This, this joint is hopping. It's a mm. lot like uh, Tombstone, Arizona. Yeah. So, he said that you, there were magic users here, right? Uh, I did not say that. Uh, you said arcane items or something. I did say that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I would imagine you can find any profession here, assuming the minotaurs don't kill all the monks. Yeah, that was the other thing mm. I was going to say. Maybe we should go back up. Uh, Captain Del Rio. <laughs> the monks are here for. Uh, Carrie, what'd you think? Mm, it was good. No, oh, thanks, Weezer. Um, but I'm cranky. You're cranky? You're, you're welcome. Yeah, because I wanted it to go different. Okay. How, How did so? you want it to go? Um,. It just needed to go easier. Okay. I mean, we have we had a lot of Easter eggs, though. Yeah, I, mean, I know. Torgal Manor. <laughs> I, well, and that's the other thing, because I'm looking at all that, and I'm like, ha-ha, Lady Torgal. Where's Blake going to die at? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Lady Torgal isn't even born yet. I know. That was distracting me. But well, yes, I, I enjoyed it. I had I had to throw it out there. Yep. So she hasn't uh, even been born yet. Mm -mm. So that was her dad, grandfather. There Great grandfather. Been how far I had in the this timeline where? Oh my yeah. god, Weezer! 
just gonna it's just gonna make you wonder at least you got to see the splendor of it as it was being built That's true. uh mm -hmm. had david rolled less you would have found them building a bridge over a giant crevasse oh that ernie later burned down mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> he burned the, the bridge yeah. was thrown Yes, exactly. You would have found oh eight. no! Is that when Dewey raged yes. and tore the puppy apart? <laughs> yep. Oh, you can fix it for me, can't you? No. <laughs> no. Well, you're an asshole. <laughs> yeah. So it's all his fault. Mm -hmm. You killed your own puppy. So yeah, you got to see a lot of Easter eggs. You got to see a lot of sites that kind of filled in the gaps for Sabellus, uh campaign. Uh -huh. So you know, not a total loss. Uh, and. You did defeat the sea monster, which was uh, kind of a tough creature. And that was what was it tough. exactly? It was a sea monster. That tells me nothing. It's like the dinosaur, you know, with the flat, with the body and the long neck and all that kind of like okay. messy. Yeah. So, I forgot what they call it, the plesiosaurus or something like that. So. Yeah, I think that's how what it's called it's got fins yeah uh -huh. he's, I see you. so folks uh thanks for joining us here on cacophony we're going to go ahead and end it early because this is a good stopping point don't forget to follow us on twitch follow us on twitter take a look at our youtube archive if you want to shoot shit about dnd join our discord if you want to buy our cool crap the link is down there uh most importantly if you want to be on the show like on the one shot on saturday still have an opening uh or not i'm not sure it depends on how high the level is uh, hit us up, uh, mhobo inc, Twitter or Gmail. Uh, we will try and get you on there. Also, if you want to buy some cool custom dice on Twitter at Pirate Dog Dice, check them out. And of course, Oddfish Games. Uh, still a couple days left on their How to RPG with Your Cat game. I played it. I loved it. Had a great time. I I highly recommend it. Did you need a cat? Uh, you don't need a cat, uh, but it always helps. I heard a Roomba can be used. A Roomba can be used. A, a Roomba could be used. So anything chaotic. So you could even use the cred campaigners because they're there as go. chaotic as possible. Uh, they also make the shine system for writers. And of course, Adventure Sense to make everything smell a whole lot better than it was. Uh, they are not going beyond their 60 cent uh, library, except for special events. So no Dead Sea Monster on a ship smell. Sorry, folks. Uh, that's it for us. Saturday night, one shot. Uh, tune in. And if you want to play, hit us up. We'll see if we can squeeze you in. For all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., thanks for joining us. Uh, dating Game Kiss and Wave. Uh, bye, everybody.